So in this problem, we have n. It's a subgroup of the center of G. And we're assuming that the quotient group uh, G mod n is cyclic. And we have to prove that G is abelian. Let's go ahead and go through it very, very carefully. So proof. So we'll start the proof by just writing down the hypotheses one more time. So let n be a subgroup of the center of G. Recall the center of G is the set of all elements in G that commute with everything. And suppose that the quotient group G mod N is cyclic. And since it's cyclic, uh, we can go ahead and give it a generator. So say G mod N is generated by the element, say, big N, little g. So it's generated by this right coset. Keep in mind that g mod n is the quotient group, so its elements are cosets, right? These are cosets. Uh, so a generator also has to be a coset. All right, in this problem, we have to prove that g is abelian. So that basically means that uh, ab is equal to ba, you know, for all a, b, and g. So to start the proof, we'll go ahead and just take um, two elements a and b and g. So suppose we have a and b in capital G. All right, so what do we do next? Well, we somehow have to relate uh, little a and little b to the fact that this group is cyclic. So you somehow have to use that. And so the way I did it was to look at the cosets. So then this coset here, well, this is in the quotient group. So this is in this cyclic group. Hence, NA is equal to NG to say the ith power for some i uh, in the set of integers. Okay, And likewise, We have NB, this coset is also in the quotient group. It's a coset, so it's in the group. Hence, NB is equal to NG, say, to the jth power for some integer j. Okay, so we have both of those conditions. I probably should have written this down uh, another way, uh, but let's, let's fix it. So then, NA is equal to, well, you can rewrite this, right? You can write this as NG, 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 and there's I copies. So it's actually NG to the I using the multiplication in the quotient group. So NA is equal to NG to the I. And NB, likewise, is equal to NG to the J. All right, so now again, we have to somehow relate A and B to these cosets. So here's, here's a little trick. So note... A is equal to, well, A uh, is an element of this coset because we can write it as EA, right? E is certainly in capital N because capital N is a subgroup. And so this is an element in this coset, which coincidentally is equal to N to the GI. Very, very sneaky stuff. So A is equal to, say, N1 G to the I for some n1 in capital N. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for B. So likewise, B is equal to EB, which is in the right coset NB, which is equal to N G to the J. So B is equal to N2 g to the j. It's fun to say g to the j for sum n2. And, and my handwriting is deteriorating as we go through the proof. Let me switch colors. All right, so to recap, we started with a, b, and g. And then we somehow wanted to relate them uh, to the fact that we have a cyclic quotient group. So we took na. We noticed that that was a coset, so it must reside in the quotient group. And so we wrote na as a power of ng. We wrote NB as a power of NG, and we rewrote it this way, which I could have done uh, up here. I could have done that up here. 
And then the tricky part is to somehow, again, relate A to the coset. Well, A is in this coset because you can write it as EA. Likewise, B is in this coset because you can write it as EB. And so now we have actual you know, relationships uh, with, with A and B, and we have little elements here, N1 and N2. These guys are in capital N. So now we'll finally look at the product AB. So then AB, and we need to show this is equal to BA. So what's A? Well, A is equal to N1 G to the I. And B is N2 G to the J. All right, so I'm going to come over here to the side and write down what we have to show. We have to show it's equal to BA. So we have to show it's equal to N2 G to the J and 1 G to the I. So it looks like we need to take the N2 and put it over here. So we can start by using the fact that N2 and G to the I commute and say, well, why? That's actually really important. It's because, this is because, N2 is an N, which is a subgroup of the center. In particular, it's contained in the center. So N sub 2 is in the center. That means it commutes with every element of G. In particular, it commutes with G to the I. Beautiful stuff. And again, looks like one more time, we need to take the N2 and put it on the left over here. So this is actually N2, N1. And powers of G commute. I'll explain why in a minute, but this is G to the J, G to the I. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But the fact that these commuted, well, one reason would be Again, because N2 is in capital N, which is contained in the center. So N2 is in the center. It commutes with every element of G. In particular, it commutes with N1. So we can say that N1 and 2 is equal to N2 and 1. What about this business here with the Gs? Uh, G to the I, G to the J. That's G to the I plus J. And I plus J are integers, so they certainly commute. So that's J plus I, and that's G to the J, G to the I. So powers of the same element in a group uh, always commute uh, for that reason. All right, we're almost there. We've got the N2. Uh, looks like we just need to uh, commute N1 and G to the J. So this is N2, G to the J, and 1, G to the I. And this time we use the fact that N1 is in capital N, which is contained in the center. And that means it commutes with every element of G. In particular, it commutes with G to the J. And this piece here, that better be B, and it is. And this piece here, that better be A, and it is. So we have that AB is equal to BA at last. Thus, G is abelian. This problem took me uh, a little while to to figure out so uh, hopefully that helps someone out there that's it